Hey there. So the 2016 election was weird, in a lot of ways. But one of the ways it was weirdest is not generally discussed. The three most important contestants were from the state of New York. Trump, for better and mostly worse, is 100% Queens, New York. Hillary Clinton, fairly or not, spent some time as a New York senator. Bernie Sanders has lived in Vermont for 50 years, but if you've heard him speak, you know he's from Brooklyn. If you add all this up, this is the most power New York has had on the national political stage in 70 years. There was a time when this wouldn't have been all that surprising. New York City is now in its third century as the biggest urban mass in the country. Historically, it got a lot more bang for its buck. For 34 years out of the 1800s, a New Yorker was vice president. And for 20 years, a New Yorker was president. Back in the 1800s, it was possible to jump from the office of collector of the Port of New York straight to the vice presidency and from there to the presidency, the way that Chester A. Arthur did. In the first half of the 20th century, New York was even more dominant, with the New Yorker as president for 20 out of the first 45 years. Now, anybody who knows anything about statistics can tell you that this set of data is a really terrible one to build an argument on. The sample size is tiny. And there are also a ton of other factors, like the politics of the time and the individual politicians, that are really, really important. But I still think that comparing this to what has happened since FDR died in 1945 is significant. Between FDR and Donald Trump, there was a single, solitary New York politician who made it to one of the country's top two offices. And Nelson Rockefeller wasn't elected. He was appointed to replace Gerald Ford after Nixon's resignation. I can't help but think that this lack of New Yorkers at the top is significant. So, the fact that U.S. voters in 2016 had to pick between two New Yorkers really was a big deal. Interestingly, New Yorkers weren't all that happy with the result. They chose Clinton over Trump 59% to 37%. This is surprising in one sense because Trump represents a throwback to an earlier form of power. He may not have come up through New York's political system, but he was definitely a New Yorker in ways that Hillary Clinton never will be. Trump is, of course, uniquely loathsome, but I think it's fascinating that New Yorkers are no longer interested in a president from New York. Things have changed. There are a lot of reasons behind New York's loss of national power. It has something to do with the hollowing out of the state of New York at the hands of Wall Street, which I've discussed elsewhere. More happily, it has to do with the distribution of economic weight and population away from the northeastern seaboard. But more than anything else, I think it has to do with a seismic shift in the nature of presidential and government power that has occurred in this country. As I laid out a couple years back, the true rulers of this country have changed profoundly. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, I suggest you click on the Patreon link here to find out more.